professional swimmers appear to cut through the water like fish. But as many of us know, we cannot all swim with such efficiency. In this episode of our video series on the science and technology of professional sports, we are taking a close look at swimming. How swimmers can streamline their bodies to get around the fact that we are not adapted for water. Whether there is such a thing as fast swimming pools, and why FINA, the international governing body of swimming, has decided to ban the all-body swimsuits that led to so many world records falling a few years ago. To answer these questions, I'm here at the Centre for Sports Engineering Research at Sheffield Hallam University in the UK. And I'm joined by the physicist turned sports engineer, Steve Hake. I guess when learning to swim, we can learn a lesson or two from fish who seem to glide effortlessly through the water. Well, of course, uh, fish and marine mammals are adapted absolutely for their environment, uh, which is water. We're adapted for air, so we're not quite so good uh, in water. So if you take something like a, a dolphin, where the back flipper is really well designed for imparting momentum to the water and pushing the body forward. Also, sharks have a skin which is adapted to decrease the coefficient of drag of the water over the body and give a nice streamlined flow to the water, particularly at the back, and reduce the drag. So uh, if you look at me, I've got quite spindly arms, not particularly well suited to uh, pushing against the water uh, and, and parting that momentum, so I'm pretty rubbish at, at swimming. So looking at a swimming pool itself for, for events, I mean, is it designed in such a way to maximise the speed of swimmers? Yeah, you'll hear people talk about fast pools or fast water. And generally what that means, it means the design of the pool is quite wide and quite deep. And what you'll see nowadays is perhaps eight lanes down the middle with two outer lanes not being used. Uh, and the water lapping right to the top or surface of, 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 the, of the pool itself. So what that does is that reduces the reflections of the waves coming off the front uh, of the athletes from the sides of the pool and coming back and slowing them down. And equally, if you've got a nice deep pool, you don't get, get any of these waves going downwards and coming back up and slowing the athlete down. So there was a lot of excitement a few years ago as well about these all-body suits that people started wearing, which led to uh, a load of records falling at the same time. Why were they so effective? Well, the, the full body suits, they started out as half body suits, they went to full body suits, and then they had polyurethane panels down the sides, and then they became full body poly, polyurethane suits. And those final suits were very, very stiff material, so it actually took quite a long time to stuff your body into them. And that had a number of effects. First of all, a bit like the shark skin, it, it improved the flow of water uh, over the body, but it also squash the body into more of a cylinder so that the cross-sectional area presented to the water was smaller. And if the cross-sectional area is smaller, then the drag is, is smaller as well. There was a couple of other effects. There's these transient effects because the body is quite a wobbly mass um, and the suits were so stiff, it stopped that wobbling and stopped any transient drag appearing. And then there was a final effect which people talked about, which was the buoyancy effect. And, and it was said that some of these suits allowed a little bit of buoyancy, um, particularly at the rear of the body. And if you think about a lot of your effort is spent in trying to keep your legs up so that you're more horizontal in the water, and that reduces this cross-sectional area and reduces the drag. So if you've got a little bit of buoyancy at the rear, keeping the rear of your body up, then it's easier to do. So perhaps less fatiguing and allowing you to put more force into the swim itself. So there's a lot of excitement around swimming at that time, but despite that, FINA have decided to, to ban the suits. Why do you think they did that? Well, they didn't like the world records, the number of world records that were being broken in 2008 and 2009. So they felt that perhaps the swimsuit was dominating the performance as opposed to the athletes. And, and we as, as the audience like to think that it's the athlete that, that's winning. So FINA came down and said, OK, no more. From the 1st of January, we're going to ban these suits, uh, 2010, uh, and we'll see them no more. I mean, does that mean that all the records that fell will be void or will they reset the world records? Or how yeah, will that, that, that was interesting. They didn't reset any records. So the records that were broken in 2008 and 2009 will still stand. But what that means is we've got some records in particularly the sprint events, the 50 metres, the 100 metres, which will not be broken for quite some years to come. And we're just going to have to live with that.